Now with Jeffrey Berman. He was the U.S. Attorney for New York Southern District, fired by President Trump in June 2020 after refusing to resign. And he's out with a new book, Holding the Line, about his tumultuous, in many ways, unprecedented tenure. This is his first interview. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I read the book over the weekend. It's pretty stunning stuff. You paint a picture of President Trump and his allies uh, pressuring you to protect his friends and prosecute his enemies. Had you ever seen anything like that before? How did it play out? I had never seen anything like that before, and uh, I was a, you know, a junior prosecutor in the Southern District in the early 90s, and uh, never seen anything like that. People who had been in the office for 40 years never saw anything like that. It was unprecedented and scary. Let's talk about some of the specifics. So you talk about uh, an effort by the president's allies in the Justice Department to get you to indict Greg Craig, who was a Democrat who had worked for President Obama. Talk about what happened. We were investigating Greg Craig and were pushed by the Justice Department to indict Greg Craig, a Democrat, before the midterm elections. The Justice Department told us, hey, you had just indicted two allies of the president, Chris Collins, who's a Republican uh, congressman from upstate New York, and Michael Cohen, who's the president's uh, lawyer and fixer, and it's time for you guys to even things out and indict a Democrat before the midterm election. You talk about a Justice Department official, Edward O'Callaghan, he says this is categorically false. Well, it, it absolutely happened. My, my deputy was on the phone with him when he was told he, we've got to even things out. He immediately came into my office, told me about the conversation. My, my jaw dropped, and I immediately grabbed my deputy, Audrey Strauss, brought her into the room. He my deputy repeated the conversation and, and she nearly hit the ceiling. It was something we'd never heard or seen before. You, you refused to indict him, but he was, Greg Craig was indicted. They went to the Washington uh, District uh, U.S. Attorney's Office. Eventually he came to trial and was acquitted, I think, within five hours. Yes. Vindication? It was vindication, but the, the case should never have been brought. I was on the phone with the U.S. Attorney from the District of Columbia trying to convince her not to indict Greg Craig. The case was too weak to be brought. It was inappropriate to be brought, and, and that's what the trial showed. You also talk about an effort to get you to prosecute the former Secretary of State, John Kerry. Yeah, that was truly outrageous. Uh, President Trump attacks John Kerry in two tweets saying that Kerry engaged in possible illegal conversations with Iranian officials regarding the Iran nuclear deal. The very next day, the Trump Justice Department refers the John Kerry criminal case to the Southern District of New York. Two tweets by the president, and the John Kerry criminal case becomes a priority for the Department of Justice. And the statute they wanted us to use was enacted in 1799 and had never been successfully prosecuted. So in about 220 years, this criminal statute was on the books. There were no convictions. Your, your office also prosecuted Michael Cohen, who is, of course, President Trump's former lawyer. How did the president's allies get involved in that case? A, a couple different ways. Uh, in the first instance, on the eve of Cohen's guilty plea, Maine Justice tried to get our office to remove any reference to individual one who was President Trump. And they were unsuccessful in that venture. And they, they were unsuccessful in every attempt to politically interfere with our office. We held the line in every instance. You know, I've never understood if President Trump is indeed individual one in, in that case, which we, we know uh, that he is, if he was directing Michael Cohen to violate the law, how come he wasn't prosecuted? Well, the, the decision to prosecute is a very complex one, and it depends. Evidence against one individual doesn't necessarily apply as equally against another person. And so, um, you know, it's a complex uh, situation, and no charges were ever brought against anyone but uh, Michael Cohen in that case. As, as I said, the, the details you have here are pretty stunning, but back when, after you were fired, you actually appeared before Congress and really refused to take on this question of political interference. Why not then? Why now? Well, when I was fired, I did not go quietly. It was about as, as noisy a departure from the Department of Justice as you could have. I issued a press release to the country saying exactly what Bill Barr had done and how Bill Barr had crossed the line. And I used the language of the obstruction of justice statute. And in my testimony before Congress, present and former uh, Justice Department employees are restricted 
by what they could say. And so the ethics office in the Southern District of New York and the ethics office at Maine Justice said, allowed me to testify, but didn't allow me to discuss any pending case. Finally, you know, Merrick Garland is facing a lot of complicated decisions on whether to prosecute former President Trump, both for January 6th and, of course, for this holding of records down at Mar-a-Lago. How strong is that case? How should Merrick Garland handle it? Well, it was an extraordinary revelation by the Department of Justice that, that Donald Trump and those around Donald Trump were being criminally investigated, not just for the mishandling of classified documents, but for obstruction of the subpoena requiring production of those classified documents. That is a very, very serious charge. If the Southern District of New York had that charge, it would have our highest priority, and we would be moving on it very quickly. And you can see in all of the Department of Justice's filings in that case, there's an urgency to move forward. And, and I can see that, and I believe it's entirely justified given the seriousness of the crimes. Jeffrey Berman, thanks very much. Holding the Line Thank comes you. out tomorrow.